I have always scored high in physics, yet I never fully understood emotions. The laws of physics made perfect sense to me. You cannot create energy, one. Colliding particles will often destroy each other, obviously, right? And the fact that every action can be explained through a clear set of principles. On the other hand, emotions seemed chaotic and elusive, almost unpredictable. So I thought to myself, what if we could apply the time-tested laws of physics to dispel the uncertainty? What if we could create the Newtonian laws of emotions from the Newtonian laws of motions? Greetings to one and all present here. Today, I have the distinct honor of taking you on a journey that may transform, may transform the way you perceive emotions. So, Let's look at the first law, and this is quite simple, honestly. The law of inertia. It just goes that an object at rest will stay at rest, and an object in motion will stay in motion, right? But how can this be related to emotions? Well, for one, that might explain why my mom will stay mad at me until I say sorry. The Inertial state of my mom is anger towards me or frustration towards me. Maybe because of a bad grade or maybe because I annoyed her. But my apology is a force that moves her from her inertial state into a sense of peace or happiness. And this inertia itself is not just limited to anger or sadness or apology. No, it's also about happiness. All of us have met that one person in our lives who would smile at anyone, who would have a lunch with any stranger, who would always make things brighter, whose presence in the room could brighten up your day. Right? And just like a boulder rolling down a hill, their happiness, their inertial state spreads to each and every one around us. Allow me to share a story. I was once part of this project, super tight deadlines, everyone high on adrenaline and cortisol, everyone running around, what are we supposed to do? This is so unreasonable. How can the teachers expect this from us in such a short span? But there was this one teammate of mine who would always stay positive. He'd crack jokes, all those silly ones. He would make us laugh and he would always encourage us. And somehow, gradually, that made the shift we started focusing on solutions instead of problems. We started to push forth despite the difficulties. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the power of the inertial state being shifted by a small but an intentional positive force. And it's crazy to imagine that teammate two years ago was a stranger I didn't know. And now he's one of my best friends. So, if emotions are forces, and we all agree here, can we possibly derive equations? Imagine you have two friends. You have Jenny on one hand, who is very light and sensitive, and you have Bob on the other, who is who's like a boulder, who would probably shrug off anything. If you give Jenny a tiny critique, she might spiral into self-doubt, try be upset, maybe even cry. But Bob, He's the chillest dude ever. He will probably shrug it off and say, I'll handle it later. It's like me with English essays. This just goes on to show that even if we apply the same amount of emotional force, even if we give the same interaction to two people, we will get different outcomes. And Newton actually had something similar to say here. He said that the force to move an object depends on how heavy it is. So what if, and hear me out, what if the force to move in a, per a person from their inertial state is their mass, their emotional resilience, multiplied by how emotionally accelerated we want them to be? I let that sink in for a second. Because that very fundamental revolutionized how we view our interactions. 
by understanding that our emotional force, our actions, our words, our subtle behavior can accelerate or decelerate emotions in other people will help us better shape the trajectory of our relationships. In a way, by being more intentional and mindful of, by how, of how we react. So that's all the serious talk. Let's get to the third law and possibly my favorite law of motion. Every action, if you can repeat with me, every action has an equal and opposite reaction, right? And this is my favorite because I see it play out all the time at my house. When my dad starts to reach for that last slice of pizza, the equal and opposite reaction is my mom giving him that glare. That glare means only one singular thing. You're on a diet. You're not supposed to eat that. But he still goes for it. <laughs> Another example might be the time I thought it would be funny to turn off the internet while my mom was in a meeting. The equal and opposite reaction was me having to eat double the vegetable portion that dinner. I hate vegetables. Okay. So that just goes on to show that every one of our actions has its consequences. The emotion we invest in a relationship are the ones you're likely to get back. So if you want positive outcomes, invest positive energy at the right mass and at the right time and to the right people. Ladies and gentlemen, these laws have helped me view emotions not as chaotic and uncertain, but as systems I could possibly navigate and influence. I wouldn't claim to know all of my emotions. None of us can. They're like forces that are impulses. They can be strong, or really, really subtle, but they're always there. But if we try and understand the nuances of these forces, we could create more balance and harmony in our everyday lives. So, the next time you feel like your emotions are defying gravity, the next time you feel like you want that extra pizza slice, remember the Newtonian laws of emotions. Thank you so much.